since the beginning of the journey up to the desert. I suffered in the desert, but I was never afraid. I suffered, but I was never afraid. I thought I was going to die, but I was never afraid. But when I arrived at the sea, that when I started to get afraid. Because I know since when I was in the Gambia, I am just like a stone. If you throw me inside the water, I'm going to the clay. I cannot swim. I can't do anything in water. So when I arrived at the sea, after being carried by a container a truck for 45 minutes, we arrived at the sea nearly when sun was falling down, at nearly sunset. So we were taken to the sea. I did not see the boat. I never knew it was a fiber that we are going to use. The Nigerians even have a name for it. They call it Lampa Lampa. So when we arrived at the sea, we were just sitting down on the sand because there is nothing else apart from the sand. So I see something just like a tent, but it was on the ground, no air. It was just free like that. And a white box was close to it, a bigger box. On the hole in that box was the machine that was supposed to take the boat. So when the agent come, the black agent, the one doing the transaction between the customers and the Arabs, when he arrived, and told, he told us that today you are going to Lampedusa. Everybody was happy. For me, I was never, I was not happy. I was not doing anything. I was just sitting, waiting to see the boat. Because I know that it's a boat that is carried us through the sea. So, but for the people who are used to it, like for example, the ones who are used to looking, uh, watching uh, news on the TV about this uh, migrant's journey, they see the boat, they knew about it. But for me, when I arrived in Libya, I never look at television. I didn't have time for that. I was just locked up in my room thinking about what will happen. So when this Arab man came, he met with the agent and told the agent that today the weather is good, these people will cross. So the agent came and told us that today you are going, you will cross today, the weather is good. So the Egyptian came, the Egyptian was the technician, he is the one who makes the boat. So when he came, he came with a small machine and started pumping this uh, balloon. I can say, I don't know, it's a balloon or a tent. So it was on the ground. We were sitting at a distance from it, like 20 meters from it. So they were busy making it. So when they on the generator, so this thing was growing. I can see it. But at first, it was just like a tire of a vehicle. It was very small. But on the whole, it is a big thing because air was just flowing. It was getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it became like a design of a ship, uh, of a boat. So when I saw this, I, the person who was sit, sitting close to me, I asked him what is going on. He told me, the boat, they are making the boat. We are going very soon. And he was smiling. I told him, why are you smiling? He said, we are very, going to Lampedusa very soon. I told him, you are crazy. We are committing suicide. He told me, what is going on? I told him, you, since in the Gambia, you know that, like the proverb says, goes in the Fulani, the eyes does not carry. But if it sees what the head can carry, it can know it. Like, for example, I told him that, you are not the captain, I am not the captain. But if you see a boat that can cross a sea, you know it. He told me, what are you trying to tell me? I told him, this is a fiber. This fiber cannot cross this sea. I told him, this Mediterranean Sea is not a river. It's, not, it's different from the river that you live in Gambia, which is just 10 meters square, uh, 10 meters wide or 100 meters wide. I told him, this is sea, the Mediterranean Sea. I told him, I read about this in geography. This is between Europe and uh, Southern Europe and Africa. So this is a sea. It's not a river. He told me, people are, but this is the boat that people are using to uh, go. I told him, for me, I'm not going. He said, what are you saying? I told him, I'm not going. I'm not committing suicide. He told me, but since the beginning of the journey, you know that this is a suicide. I told him, no. I never knew this, the balloon that will carry me to Lampedusa. When I had that boat, I know, it's a, I know a boat. I've never known this thing to be a boat. The boats I know in the Gambia, and this is different. He told me, yeah, but there are other boats that are bigger than this one here also. But this is the one we are lucky of. And I told him, that, do you call that luck? We are not lucky. For me, I'm canceling my journey. He, that boy moved from where I was sitting. He went to sit at a different place. So he told him I was just there to discourage him. So I went to the agent, the one person I paid my money to. I told him that my brother, I want to cancel my journey. He told me, everybody is happy that you are going today, you are canceling your journey. What is wrong? I told him, because I know this boat cannot take me to Lampedusa. He told me, which boat cannot take you to Lampedusa? This is a good one. I told him, how many people are here? Don't look at the boat, look at the people it is supposed to carry. We are more than 100. He told me, don't talk. If this Arab man here, he's going to kill you. I told him, I'm even going to talk to the Arab man. He told me, go. For me, I'm not going there. So the, when I went, the agent went a different direction. I went to the Arab man. I told him, yes, I paid my money. He said, yes, right. I told him, I paid my money to cross to go to Lampedusa. He said, yes. I told him that I have canceled my journey. He said, and why? 
I told him that I know this boat cannot take me to Lampedusa. He told me, Barra, in Arab. I told him, no, Barra. It's my money. I paid to you. I said, I'm not going now. Take my money. Is there anything wrong with that? He said, yeah, if you arrive here, you are going. If you don't go, I'll just push you into the water. You die. He told me, Tulu, Lampedusa. So he, I told him, no, me, I'm not going. I cannot take, go into this boat. I know this boat cannot take me to Lampedusa. So I paid my money. You can take my money. Me, I'm going back. He told me, you cannot go back and spoil my business. If you go back to Tripoli, what are you going to tell the rest of the boys? Why are you back? He told me, it's either you go, or me, he told me, me myself, I'll push you inside the water. One boy, small boy, was close to me. He told me that everybody here is not afraid. Why are you afraid? I told him, because of you people don't know what you are doing. I know what I'm doing. He said, but you have no other choice here now. If you run, this man will just shoot you and die. You'll die. So, I have no other choice. I told him, yes, I'm doing it against my will. I had no other choice. I will do it. This is how I came to Kuro. So, in the evening, after 12 o'clock in the night, the Arab man tells us it's time to go. So, we boarded the boat. We landed on the boat. We were more than 100. But I can remember the figure still now when we arrived in Lampedusa. And my friend was, his ticket number was 101. So, that shows me that we were more than 100. But during in the boat, I, not know, I did not know the exact number, but I know that we are more than 100. So, when we uh, started the journey in the sea, we drove for about two hours and our machine got a breakdown. For, so for two hours, uh, four hours, we were just floating in the, in the river like that. Thank to God, we were lucky that one Nigerian mechanic was there. He was the one who repaired the machine and we continued the journey. So the following day at midday, we were rescued by the Italian Guardia Costello. If I had known it was like this since in the Gambia, I would have never embarked on this journey. If I'm seeking political refuge, I would have better gone to a different country. Even though if I don't have 100% peace, at least I'll go to a country where I'll survive than going embarking on this journey. My reason of saying that is that this journey there is so much so dangerous that the probability that you will make it to Italy is just 1% out of 100. Because people start dying from the desert. From the desert, people are dying up to the sea. How many people will die before you land in Lampedusa? Like, for example, if the people, are people who are starting the journey in Africa are 100, the people who are arriving in Lampedusa is less than 20, I can say. Because in the desert, everybody who passed through the desert will tell you that I have seen dead bodies or I have seen new graves of migrants crossing. Whoever tell come to Libya will tell you that I have seen people who are killed in police stations in prisons, people who are kidnapped are never seen again. Coming to the sea, you see people who have cups. It's difficult to say, but the people, number of people dying is too much. So if at all I was in the Gambia right now, I'll never embark on this journey. I will not even think about it. Yes, I, I can say that I'm, I'm one of the few lucky ones to make it through the Sahara Desert and make it through the sea and arrive in Lampedusa with, your, with our lives. I thank the Italian people for that because the Guardia Costera are the people who uh, rescued us at sea. So the expectations were that if we arrive in Italy, we get peace, we get documents, we get political asylum. Yes, it's true, we got peace. Peace number one, we got it here. There is no threat to our lives. There is no bullying. There is no kidnapping. We are safe. But when it comes to the issue of giving political asylum, is a little bit hard still now. Because if I am to tell you the truth, this is my ninth to tenth month now in Italy, and I only have one sojourn for six months still now, which is supposed to expire this 23 of May. This May come, eh, this May here, 23 is supposed to expire. So still now, I did not go to the commission. I don't know my fit. I am in Italy. I applied for political asylum, so I don't know my fit still now. After nine months, I'm sitting, waiting, still now. So I don't know either I'll be given the political asylum or I'll not be given the political asylum. Not so many people are getting paper now. Because the information I'm getting now, most of the people going for the commission are giving negative. Because right now, even where I live, I have one Ghanaian boy who went for the commission and he's giving negative. So I also see one Gambian there who is giving positive. He is giving document, but he did not receive it yet. He only received the receipt. He did not re receive the document proper. So, 
since I arrived in my hotel, a uh, new hotel now, one, two people also, uh, only two people went for the commission. One person is giving document and one person is negative. But the information I'm getting from the other camps is that most of the people going for the commission are giving negative. So very few people are giving the political asylum. The advice I will give to the people who are at home who did not make the journey yet is if your life is in threat in your country, it's better you uh, seek political refuge in a different country in Africa than embarking on this uh, dangerous journey to Italy. But if you embark on this dangerous journey to Italy, you will use the wealth of your family and upon arriving in Italy here, you will sit for months, like 10 months, 9 months, 8 months without going to the commission. And after going to the commission, so many people end up having negative. So after using the whole wealth of your family, you arrive here, you are given negative. So you don't have the paper. And in Europe, if you don't have document here, you just keep on hanky yanking in the street like that. You are not welcome. This means you are not welcome here. So if Italy, the first uh, destination, if they give you negative, the probability that you will get it in a different country is very, very, very min minimal. It's very low. So the advice is that before using the whole wealth of your family and embark on this journey, come up to Italy here to save your life. And you arrive here, if you don't get the paper, your life is not safe still now. Because if you don't get the paper, where are you going to live? You don't get money to rent a house. And if you don't rent a house, where are you going to live? In the street. And if you live in the street, still now your life is not secure. So it's just like you are still now in Africa, in your dangerous country. Una la lampa to giani, una la